Hey guys, I wanted to make a video about something that I actually, well, I, I didn't want to make a video about. Uh, I want to talk to you all today about the harassment, the negativity, and the personal attacks, and the just general bad vibes in the Warcraft community. This has been going on ever since, uh, well, it's been going on ever since the beginning of the game, but it's been getting worse over the past year or so, and I think it's been boiling over leading up to and now into patch 9.1. And especially with the Blizzard lawsuit, I think that's given a lot of people uh, justification and it's emboldened them to be much more aggressive and much more direct with the negativity that they've directed towards Blizzard and also Blizzard employees. And this has been going on also to content creators and I've been seeing a number of people posting about uh, getting a lot of hate whenever they're streaming World of Warcraft or trying to just say anything positive about the game or just enjoy the game and they get hate from a bunch of people because those people are no longer happy with the game or they're angry about the lawsuit. And I feel like this has become a bigger issue uh, ever since, uh, ever since, I mean I feel like it, the, the lawsuit really was the critical mass. But there has also been a lot of negativity leading up to that. I remember whenever I started playing Final Fantasy, uh, that's whenever a lot of people started trying to shit on people that were playing WoW. And of course, this is not something that I ever support or endorse or anything, but it's just the unfortunate reality of uh, creating content like that. If you're you know, a big content creator for one game, and then you move over to another game, uh, even if it's just to test it out or play it temporarily, uh, people are going to take that and turn that into more than what it, what it is. And I think now it's just gotten to a point where it's so escalated and it's so negative and I think people are playing this game of hot potato with the toxicity and negativity in the WoW community. Uh, people are blaming it on the devs, uh, people are blaming it on me, people are blaming it on the community, they're blaming it on other content creators. It's it's the Mythic Raiders, it's the PvPers, it's the uh, Final Fantasy players that are coming and sowing Discord in our community. The reality is that everybody's at fault. Everybody is. I think the developers are at fault for making systems that promote this negative type of behavior and not listening to the player base. I think that to a certain degree content creators, including myself, uh, can be at fault, especially whenever you're looking for uh, you're looking for something to talk about, and sometimes you're not as generous as you maybe should be with a uh, with a system or something like that, and it, it it becomes very easy to get wrapped up and get upset and get angry whenever, especially you feel yourself being criticized because. Uh, contrary to like whenever you're creating a product, like let's say you're creating a uh, you know you're creating a car, and somebody says the car's bad, it's it's a lot easier to compartmentalize that into the car being bad and not necessarily a personal attack on you, much more so than whenever you're a content creator or I think also an artist in in many ways, and the art or the content that you're creating is uh, for all in means means and purposes, it, it's, it's effectively an extension of yourself. And whenever you have that happen and that gets criticized, people get defensive really fast. And I felt like I've, I've gotten that way. I think that a lot of people have. I think there's developers that have been that way. And I think, for example, like this is, uh, it, this is tangential, but it's also similar to this, is that whenever you know you're a streamer like you'll get threads about you like on different uh, subreddits or on other websites etc and people will always take things that you say out of context or they will interpret what you're saying in the most uncharitable way possible and it, it really sucks to have that happen and I think that the developers probably feel the same way in a lot of ways and it's just kind of led to this like gradual it's like a, uh, in a way, it's like, um, you know, how the Earth used to have all the continents together in, like, Pangea, and then slowly they've just shifted away from each other. I feel like that's kind of what the WoW community has, has had happen, right? You've got North America and South America, or... Uh, <laughs> I apologize. North America and South America, you got, you know, Europe over there, Australia down there, and, and these are completely different land masses at this point, and um, it, it becomes much easier to... Uh, uh, to, to forget that you're all really on the same team and I'd like to talk about some of the things that uh, The game could do better in terms of harassment and things like that and ways that I feel like harassment has been allowed to happen uh, in Warcraft and how I think that it should be solved and I think one of the main things is that there are a lot of people right now It's it's very in vogue. I think it's more popular now to quit playing Warcraft than to be playing Warcraft and it's unfortunate that that's the case. And I think that 
There's also a misconception that content creators are the people who can actually change the minds of their uh, viewers. I think that there are a lot of times that content creators have, I, I would rephrase that, and I would say that content creators more so have the power to present an argument uh, to their viewers in a way that somebody who's not a content creator or has a large audience does not have that opportunity to uh, as readily accessible to them. So, for example, uh, there are a lot of times that whenever I present an argument or I say something, a lot of my chat disagrees with me on it. Like, for uh, I come up with a few examples, and then I can use a, a broader example, too, with sponsored streams. So, one example is that I've, I've stated multiple times that I don't really mind if, like, I dated a girl that did OnlyFans or did any of that other type of, like, uh, lewd content or, you know, pornographic content. It's just not something that personally offends me or makes me insecure or, or bothers me. Uh, other people don't feel the same way, and every time that I, uh, I, I say that, uh, I get called a cock and all this other stuff uh, just because I don't really have the same values as other people. And I think that that kind of goes to show that oftentimes you can't really change the way that people feel at their core, and I think oftentimes content creators more so give the opportunity to allow uh, allow an audience to have a standard bearer or some sort of rallying point for their position or their opinions and not necessarily dictate those opinions themselves because if you're a content creator and all you do is have opinions that nobody agrees with I don't think you're ever really going to get that popular and it's just the reality of things and there are of course uh, many times where content creators do go against the grain and present a very well-reasoned argument and I think that well-reasoned argument uh, does actually change people's perception. That's happened a number of times. I think that two examples of this in the Warcraft community is the Warlord Draenor was not really that bad video by Himarad and then also the uh, the Mad Season level boosting video because before that video the level boosting and Burning Crusade was perceived to be an elitism issue and people felt like the people who didn't want leveling boosting uh, were just uh, you know toxic elitists etc. And I think after he made that one hour video it became a lot more evident that uh, it was a much larger and much more uh, grand issue than that. So I do think that content creators have the opportunity to change the minds of audiences. However, I don't think that those content creators have the uh, ability to do that all the time. I think that that ability and everything about it, it hinges entirely on that person's uh, ability to create a positive and strong argument for it. and. I'm going to draw one more larger scale comparison for this, just so I can explain it. So, uh, sponsored streams. Uh, there are a number of people who do sponsored streams, and I've done them before too, and usually I try to only do sponsored streams with games that uh, I would have probably played on my own, or I was thinking about playing, and the money just makes it like, okay, you know what, let's do this, let's try it out. But the reality is that there are times whenever uh, people take sponsored streams, and I'll give two, two games for example. I'm going to give uh, Fortnite for one example, and I'm going to give the Marvel Avengers game for the other example. And with the Marvel Avengers game, there are, they must have pumped millions and millions of dollars into influencer marketing campaigns to have uh, different streamers and everything play this game on their stream and promote it. And as far as I know, the game is completely dead the moment that the money stops coming in. And I think it's very evident why. It's because people don't really like the game. It's not an enjoyable game for them. And the excitement around it is purely, uh, it, it's, it, it's artificial. Uh, it, it's propped up. It's not real. It's just, uh, it's artificially inflated because they're having people that are getting paid to play it. I think this is true also with Twitch drops. I think it's also true with other sorts of promotions like that. So this is a very common thing that advertisers do in order to promote their game and create uh, inflated numbers. So another example that I can use, and this is an example of it not working, but an example that I can use of it working is uh, Fortnite. Uh, there was a day, many years ago, that a, a young Tim the Tatman, a young Dr. Disrespect on Twitch, uh, and a number of other people were all paid on the same day to play Fortnite together with each other uh, This brand new game like it just came out with this BR mode and you know Everybody wanted to see what it was like and you know what they played the game and people saw that game and they said to themselves Wow, this is actually pretty fun. I want to try this game out. I want to play it and I think that kind of goes to show that the content creator itself does not necessarily have the power to create opinions but they have the power to I, I guess create an argument for an opinion.
So it's not necessarily in the content creator's power to make people feel a certain way, but it's more so in their power to allow them to allow an audience to verbalize or rally around them whenever they personify a certain opinion. And the reason why I'm going back and I'm explaining this is because it's very important whenever you look at the negativity surrounding the WoW community and where I think it comes from. And the reason for that is because if somebody is making positive WoW videos right now, I think that a lot of people would be angry at them and they would be unhappy and frustrated because they feel like there are so many issues that are plaguing the game that have been ignored by the development team or that have just been uh, you, you know, provided better alternatives to with games like Final Fantasy. So even if a person provides a good argument for why something is, uh, is good or whatever, it doesn't necessarily matter if it's not something that resonates with the audience. And that's where I think it's much more of a symbiotic relationship between opinions being created uh, by content creators and then opinions being held by the community. The opinions are held by the community, which empowers the content creators, which furthers the opinions in the community, which further empowers the content creators. Now, the dark side to this is that that does mean that in a lot of ways, uh, it does mean that in a lot of ways, I... Uh, I think that you create an echo chamber, and it happens a lot of times, especially on places like Reddit, where uh, dissenting and uh, you know different opinions are, are downvoted and therefore silenced, uh, you know, in, in a certain way. So you have these things happen with the WoW community too, where uh, opinions become more and more radicalized, uh, opinions become more and more extreme, and they become more and more intolerant to other perspectives. And I think this happens everywhere. It happens in politics. But I think that uh, WoW is just kind of a microcosm of that. And whenever you see these communities that become so vitriolic and angry, whenever they hear different opinions about different things, especially in a video game, it can be very evident that those people are uh, those people are not living in a a rational world. They're not they're not you know using a rational mind. And one thing that I find to be very upsetting about this and frustrating about this is that. It finds it you find yourself very very hard pressed to inject any sort of nuance into a conversation. Like for example, I think in patch 9.1, I really like the improvements that Blizzard has done with Torghast, and that doesn't mean that I don't like I like everything about Torghast, but I think that it's been a noticeable improvement, and I think Blizzard has made Torghast better overall uh, with their changes. And whenever I say that, I get called a shill, and all I hear is people spamming Torghast. And really, it's because it's very easy to spam the word Chorgast, and it's much harder to think about it and just say, yeah, I agree. And it comes into this, like, uh, perspective of Marco Polo, right? Where, like, you say Torghast, I say Chorgast. Uh, you say, uh, you know, like, what, what would it be? Like, Covenants, I say Pull the Rep Cord. Uh, you say, uh, you know, Heart of Azeroth, I say Borrowed Power. And, and, you know, Shards of Domination are just bad, right? You can never really look at them uh, objectively because... Uh, whenever content is created for such a large audience, uh, that nuance is diluted out of it. And it becomes much harder to have those more in-depth conversations because of that. So whenever you go back and you look at the WoW community and you see the way that this harassment manifests itself, the harassment manifests itself because of those people effectively like self-radicalizing each other and becoming more and more angry and frustrated and by uh, extension of that, separating themselves from the other parts of the community and then creating their own sub-communities where they never never interact with each other. It's one of the reasons why I always liked the systems in like Burning Crusade and Vanilla WoW, where it encouraged a lot of interplay between PvP and PvE, because I felt like it was important to have the entire player base playing with each other. But that's kind of more of an in-game example. Right now I want to talk about some of the... Uh, the ways that Blizzard could do a better job with harassment in WoW. And I think that one of the biggest ways for that is that they just need to invest money into it. I think that Blizzard has had a laissez-faire, uh, pretty much hands-off approach to the harassment issues in WoW, and they've always had this perspective. I can give some of my own personal examples with this, and then I want to also rebut probably a opinion that I believe a lot of people do have uh, that assume that it's just because I'm a streamer. Uh, there's people that have messaged me like every day and they would just spam me with the n-word, right? Hard R, n-word, all caps lock, it's a whole paragraph, and just one, two, three, four, five. 
and they would even put it in their name. So then by reporting them, I would put the name, which was a, a, a phonetic of the N-word, uh, on the screen. And so it would, you know, put my account at risk on Twitch because they would be doing it while I was streaming. And I would put these people on ignore. And a uh, little fun fact here is that I don't know if it still works this way, but it worked this way maybe six months ago. Is that if you put some character on ignore, let's say the character's name is, uh, you know, Asmon Baldex, and you put Asmon Baldex on ignore, and then he deletes his character and then remakes it with the exact same name, it effectively clears it from the ignore list. And Blizzard has made it hard to actually block Battle.net accounts, and in the process of that, they have made it easier for people to circumvent the ignore feature and allow them to harass different users and different fucking little moth, um, uh, different users, and uh, get around that. Now, obviously, you can put in a ticket to solve this problem. It's very easy to do that. However, the ticket systems and the punishment systems are not adequate. I remember whenever that person, I reported them, obviously I reported them, and for spamming me with the N-word constantly and doing it over the course of multiple days through multiple characters, uh, ev evading, ignores, and everything, the person received either a, I, th I don't remember if it was a 24-hour or a three-day suspension for this. And it was extremely frustrating for me to see this happen, and I was very, like, I was very disappointed to see this because it made me feel like Blizzard didn't care. And it made me feel like now I have to kind of like take things into my own hands because they are just allowing this harassment to occur. And whenever I uh, brought this opinion up uh, on stream, I think that there were a lot of people who said that it was because I was just a streamer. And because I'm a streamer, I'm having this negative experience. And if I wasn't a streamer, I wouldn't have this negative experience. And the, the, the counterpoint that I'm going to give to that is that I'd like you to... Uh, scroll down to the comment section and I'd like many of the women and also uh, anybody else, uh, black people, uh, anybody like that who's had an experience and had to experience racism or sexism or stalking or any sort of really weird obsession about them, uh, I'd like you guys to share your stories in the comment section to put in this into perspective of how common this problem is and why Blizzard has fallen short of dealing with this for 15 years. This has been an issue for years and years and years, and Blizzard has turned a blind eye to it. And I don't want anybody to believe that I think Blizzard wants it to happen. I don't think Blizzard wants it to happen at all. I think the reality is that Blizzard, it's just cheaper for them to just simply, uh, to simply not hire people and let these things work themselves out. And the reality is that many of these things have worked themselves out, and the outcome of it has been that the person that was harassed quits the game, or things escalate to a point where it makes the community worse overall. So overall, I think it's just Blizzard wanting to save money and not actually invest in the things that they say that they care about. I think that if Blizzard really does care about harassment and these types of sexism and racism and other types of uh, you know targeted harassment that they wear pens about all the time, I think that they need to stop wearing the pens and they need to start hiring customer service representatives to deal with these problems and have legitimate punishments for them because realistically in any other place in the entire world, behavior like that would not be tolerated and Blizzard not only tolerates it, but they ignore it. And I do think that it's their fault that that happens. Uh, obviously you're going to have, like it's the people's fault they're doing it, that, that ultimately it's their, their responsibility. but. You have to expect that people are going to do bad things, and if you don't do that, it's more so your responsibility that you can't just let these things go on, and if you do, it just makes the community worse and worse and worse. And an example I can give with that is uh, many communities on Twitch, I'm not going to name any names, I think you guys can all think of them, uh, communities that did very little to combat harassment and negativity and other types of like racism and sexism over the years, uh, those communities do not work themselves out. Uh, those communities uh, self-radicalize more and more and more in the exact same way that I was talking about at the beginning of this video with content creators and the community becoming a self-radicalizing echo chamber just by the nature of the way people consume content online. And I think that this is what will happen with the WoW community too. And this is actually what did happen with the WoW community and I'll give an example of this with RBGs. Uh, RBGs were one of my favorite things to do in WoW, in Cataclysm. And in the middle of Mists of Pandaria, I would say like tyrannical season or so, I quit playing RBGs. 
and the reason for that, and this is after I got, I got like the Warbound title, which is like 300 wins in RBGs. Uh, I played them every single day. I got Grand Marshal every season. Uh, I, I never got Hero of the Alliance, unfortunately. But I played it very seriously, and I was probably one of my favorite things to do in the game. And I did this so much that I got this title, I got like all of the achievements and everything, minus Hero of the Alliance, and I stopped playing because I simply refused to download a proxy in order to play the game. I'm just not, I'm not going to download a proxy because people would DDoS me whenever I logged into a Warsong Gulch and they saw my name and they knew that they had me on Skype so they were able to collect my IP address and then send packets to my, my, my IP address to disconnect my character. And this happened for years and this was not an issue that really worked itself out. Uh, this was an issue that effectively killed RBGs. Uh, RBGs have been completely ignored by Blizzard and I think one of the reasons for that is that they're so notorious for having a bad community. And Blizzard has had a no oversight policy on this as well. There are people in the RBG community that would regularly, um, there was a girl that I know, not going to say her name, uh, but there was a girl that I know, she and I did RBGs together uh, for years. She was a friend of mine for many, many years, and still is even. And the people in her RBG community and the PvP community, I would have to be extremely careful to watch my chat whenever she was on my stream because I didn't want them to start spamming uh, imager links and picture links to her nudes. And I had to constantly be vigilant against this because I knew it would happen. And uh, Blizzard has really made no effort ever to really root some of those people out. I think that whenever it becomes public, they do try to deal with it. And I've seen this happen with, uh, recently there were a number of players who were disqualified from playing because of saying like uh, the N-word and stuff like that. But I think that it just goes so much deeper than that. And I think that there's also a fundamental toxicity that comes with people like that in competitive games that Blizzard has done nothing to stem the tide of. And that is absolutely their responsibility. And I think that it's certainly their fault as well. Um, I also want to talk about kind of my community and where I think my community falls into this whole harassment and like negativity uh, perspective because this has been something that's been a, t a hot topic as well. Uh, I don't really feel like I, I, I don't really feel like I harass anybody. I really don't. And I actually resent the idea that I do or that I am a fundamentally toxic person. I think that in the past I absolutely have been and I take responsibility for that. And uh, for some things, I'm sorry I did that. And her things, I thought it was kind of fun. But whenever I'm talking about toxicity in, in these games, especially in Warcraft, I'm not really talking about uh, ninja looting. I'm not really talking about uh, you know slash spitting on somebody. I feel like these are all. This is just like video game friction. Like yes, it's bad. I'm not saying it's it's not bad. But it, it, this like whenever I'm saying toxicity, I'm talking about um, you know targeted racism, targeted harassment, uh, stalking, doxing. These kinds of things here, these are the things that I, I really think are truly toxic. These are the things that are very negative, and those are the things that I really want to speak out about because I think they're the most pressing and the most pertinent things to deal with. So whenever somebody says that I'm toxic for the WoW community because I say big dick or because uh, you know I promoted the slash spitting on people for having store mounts, I find it to be incredibly hypocritical because those people have no problem to turn that around and harass me back. I think that oftentimes people take things personally, and because they take them personally, even whenever it doesn't necessarily uh, target them or affect them, um, that they feel that they are uh, obligated or allowed or morally justified to respond to that uh, harassment with harassment from themselves, even though that harassment initially did not really occur to them on a personal level. And I've seen this happen with other people at, uh, at Blizzard even. Uh, these people have, uh, like I've made a lot of categorical remarks about different systems and different things in, in WoW, and I've said that these systems and the things in WoW are, are terrible. And I've even said that some of the people that work on them probably shouldn't be working on them anymore. And I want to make it very clear that I believe that. Uh, the fact is that for the past five years, uh, the systems in the game have been, and just the content in the game, has been on a slow and obvious and steady decline. Uh, the development team does not spend any time listening to the player base. They make the player base beta test bad, bad systems for years for expansions. And they've diluted and killed their community by doing so. 
And I don't think that whenever I say this, I change anybody's mind. I think that whenever I say this, other people say, yeah, I agree. I'm not uh, the person causing people to feel this way. I'm simply the person who is vocalizing the way that they feel. And you see so many people leaving the game, and you see so many people, uh, you know, hating on the game, etc. And the reason why they do that is because people have said over and over and over, don't give us X, don't give us Y, please stop doing X, please stop doing Z. And Blizzard just keeps doing it. They just keep doing it. So, like, what do you do? Uh, these are people who have been invested in the game for 15 years. They don't want to quit the game, so they become more vitriolic with their feedback. And I don't think it is acceptable to do that. And I've tried to make things as not as personal as possible. But the reality is that whenever you constantly fail, and that's what I think that they've done. I think that they have failed in so many ways. And I think that I think probably the best example of this is the Covenant corruption rotation, or sorry, Covenant, uh, the corruption vendor rotation in BFA. The fact that this was even tolerated by a single player in the entire game just goes to show how badly the WoW community is beaten and they just don't care at all about uh, the systems anymore. They don't care about the game anymore and they'll just eat shit for no reason. Uh, it was not acceptable for that kind of thing to happen and I see this happening more and more and I don't really know what to do about it because I've tried to offer more constructive feedback and it gets ignored. I've tried to be more direct about it and it's been ignored. And at this point, it's like you just basically have to either play the game and say, fuck it, it is what it is, or just stop playing. And I think that there are a lot of people who have come to that crossroads and gone one way or another. And it's really sad to see all the videos of people taking one approach or another approach because I don't think it's necessary. And I think that from now on, uh, this is something that I'm going to try to do because I don't really know, like, it's it's so sad and frustrating for me and I, I do feel kind of dumb for doing this especially in the situation in the position I'm in but I'm just gonna try to not be as much of an asshole about it anymore and I'm just gonna try to be much more analytical because it's the only thing to do like I, I don't it, it's it's so frustrating to me because like I've I've played the game for 15 years and I've streamed for five or four something like that I don't remember how long made videos for even longer than that and I, I've never felt more ignored and I've never felt like there's more of a divide and a wall between the community and also the developers and I, I do understand that I think that to some degree whenever I do say that I think they should be fired that it probably does uh, it probably does promote that it, it does and it, it puts me in a weird position because it's what I think is true and I think that any reasonable person would say that if somebody delivers a bad product for five years that you should probably get somebody else to deliver the product. It, it, this is not a personal attack. This is a categorical statement. And I, I, I don't really like the idea that it is a personal attack at all. It's the same thing if somebody said about streamers personally or as a, as a category versus if somebody said something about me. And it's a very big difference. And I uh, resent the idea that there are a number of people in the community who feel that because of my stature and, and my size in the community in terms of like how many viewers I get or how many people follow me or uh, you, you know watch my videos etc that I should uh, take punches from people and I should take their harassment and not be able to respond to it I find it to be very narcissistic and I think that it's also entitled that they feel like they can do these things with impunity and they can harass me and say negative things about me and then whenever I say something back, they say that they're being harassed. What do you think happens whenever you say what you do? I get messages all the time, every single day, from people that tell me to kill myself, uh, people that tell me that I'm wrong, uh, people that take things that I say out of context and then use it as grounds for a personal attack. I've seen this happen to me for years, and to just act like this is a one-way street that your community is just this nice, beautiful, you know, uh, you know, garden of rainbows and butterflies is just simply not true. Uh, there are a lot of people, and I think that oftentimes this is the case, the people that are the most pleasant and most optimistic and, you know, they put on the most happy persona 
uh, oftentimes become the most hateful and spiteful and uh, vicious whenever they feel like they're challenged. And I've seen this happen a lot to me personally, and I really disagree with, and I also resent the idea that I should roll with the punches and allow this to happen without defending myself whenever I believe that the people who are saying these things are contributing to harassment for me. I also want to make it very clear that I'm not a victim here. Um, I mean, to a certain degree, yeah, sure, like you could look at it that way. I don't. Um, I think this is just a online interaction, and of course, yes, people do take it too far uh, many times, but uh, I'm not really a victim. I don't really, I'm not really looking for sympathy. I'm not looking for help, exactly. Uh, I just want it to be known that whenever you engage in that, it, you know, I said, you know, if you take the low road, I'll meet you there. I'm not going to high road anybody. Uh, I don't want to do that, but I also don't want to get pushed around and bullied. And I find it to be, as I said, narcissistic and entitled to expect that I should allow this to happen to myself for any reason. And I also, at that same time, have to accept that people will be uh, rude and, and negative towards me if I, if I do that. And it's something that I have to deal with myself. But the only thing that I can really tell myself is that I try not to start those things. Uh, I, I never want to initiate a conflict like that. But I'll, I'll rise to the occasion if somebody else does. And I, I would prefer not to do that anymore. And I don't really know exactly how to approach that without just being a punching bag. And it makes it very hard for me. And it's just taxing uh, very mentally whenever you have people that are constantly, uh, you know, trying to bite away at you and trying to uh, find different ways that, uh, you know, they can rationalize uh, negativity and abuse towards you. And I, I, I do want to say that I just want to move past it. I don't want to deal with this anymore. I don't think it's good for the community either. I think the reality is that ever since the lawsuit, there have been a lot of people, I, I've of course covered pretty much all of the different angles and everything about the lawsuit. Uh, I've covered all of these things and in the process of doing that, I've attracted a large audience of people who uh, dislike Blizzard and because of that, those people use my community as a uh, as a hub as a you know as I said earlier as a rallying point and then those people are unfortunately combined with my community and then seen as the same thing and I think that's not really true I think that there are a lot of people who uh, I've I've seen this from other customer service representatives from uh, Blizzard that whenever the whole lawsuit stuff came out there were a lot of people that were just putting in tickets uh, telling GMs that they were, uh, you know, enabling rape and stuff like that and just really bad stuff. And, you know, imagine if you're a GM working in already very bad conditions and now you have uh, this person who's harassing you for something that you didn't even do. Maybe you even played a part in uh, trying to stop happening and maybe you could even be a victim of and now you're being harassed for it as well under the guise of self-righteousness. Uh, it must be extremely taxing as well. And it's very hard to know what to do with a situation like that. Uh, do I stop talking about it? I think it's very important to me personally. As a Blizzard fan, I do feel betrayed in a lot of ways. Uh, I've been a loyal Blizzard fan for over 20 years now. And to see what's happened and to see how it's been approached is really sad for me to see. But at the same time, I don't know how to deal with these problems and how to talk about them in a way that won't have any degree of collateral. And I don't really also think that I should have to muzzle myself whenever I'm talking about somebody who's uh, who's been abusive towards me. I don't think that's fair. And overall, I think I just want to, as I said, I just want to move past this. And uh, like, I know that the WoW community has been bad, and I think that it's probably going to keep getting worse until uh, more changes are made at Blizzard. And I think ultimately, if they really want to see the, the community get better, just make the game better, uh, if that was the case, then people would be too busy playing the game to uh, be angry about the community. I remember, like, the, there's always so much toxicity at the beginning of Path of Exile leagues because everybody's sitting in queue, so all they have to do is sit around and complain about the fact that they can't play the game. And so I think this is the case with a lot of, uh, a lot of the WoW fans, too. And um, I, I, so what does this really mean for me? Uh, how, how does this mean for me? Like, what do I want to do? Uh, I think I want to try to focus a little bit more on the more constructive aspects of uh, critiquing the game. And I think that I also want to try to move past and uh, try to avoid having as many personal fights with people. And this is something that I 
want to make it very clear I don't like doing this. Uh, this is just frustrating for me. Uh, it stresses me out and I don't like it. Um, as I said, whenever you're a content creator, uh, you know, criticism of your content and criticism of you as a person, there's a very fine line between those two things and oftentimes it gets bored and the criticism is viewed as harassment and sometimes harassment as is misconstrued as, as criticism as well. And I think it's something that I can improve on and it's something that's it's so hard to improve on that, it really is. But uh, I think everybody can do a better job. Uh, if it's like me or the Blizzard devs or the community members or anything, uh, it's something that needs to be done together and I, I do apologize, this is such a long video, but there's so many topics and so many things about this and so many angles that I want to talk about that I hope I covered them all, and I hope that you guys can see my perspective on this. Uh, as I said, I'm not a victim. Um, I'm a big boy. I'm a big boy. I can handle it, uh, but I don't want to have to, and I'd like to move past these things and start actually trying to make the game a better place rather than figuring out and play the blame game on who made it worse. Because the reality is that I do think that in many ways Blizzard does have the sole responsibility of being the stewards and curators of their community. And we as a player base should expect better, especially with customer service, than what we've gotten recently. And as I said before, there are a lot of women and uh, you know people that are minorities in any and all ways really uh, that have had horrible experiences and had those experiences ignored by Blizzard or marginalized by Blizzard. And I think it goes to show that this is not a streamer issue. Uh, this is an ongoing issue that's been going on for, for years. And um, it costs money to fix these problems. And until Blizzard wants to invest money into fixing those problems, they'll never go away. Because uh, there's always going to be bad actors. There's never been a single crime in the history of humanity that's been prevented from happening. There are some that have been, some that have changed. You know, people don't steal horses as much as they steal cars now. But the core idea of every crime is still very present in our society in the same way that it was with Cain and Abel. So I think that it's important to keep that in mind. And it's unrealistic and idealistic and also, I think, counterproductive and uh, harmful to just assume that people should just simply stop. It, it doesn't help anybody because it won't happen. So anyway, uh, I, I do apologize for the length of the video. Uh, hopefully you guys were able to uh, not fall asleep during it. But there were a lot of things that I wanted to get off my chest, and it's been stressing me out for the past few weeks, and I just wanted to talk about it, because at the core, I, I love WoW, and I hate to see the place that it's in. I hate to see content creators that are friends of mine get hate for just being able to play the game and enjoy it. And I also don't like seeing the, oh, the, the bridge that's being burned between the community and the content creators and the WoW devs, too. And I'd like to extend an olive branch and uh, try to just put that shit behind us and move on and try to actually make the game a better place. Because I don't really feel like this is not going, I don't think this is going to lead anywhere positive. And I think it's just gonna keep getting worse if people like me don't start speaking out against it. And the reason why I wanted to do it is I think that again, people believe that uh, I'm a conduit for these kinds of things. And because I have the largest community, uh, because a lot of people browse uh, you know, my subreddit, they go to my Twitter, uh, they, they watch my streams. Uh, that's why I feel like I have to be the person that, that says these things because, uh, you know, I have so many people that watch me and I think that they do feel emboldened whenever I say negative things about Blizzard to harass people. How do I handle that? I don't know. Uh, we do our best to ban people and, and get rid of people, but you, you can only react in many cases with that. You can very rarely be able to deal with it proactively. So uh, it, it's a learning experience for everyone. And I just hope that at the end of it, the game will actually improve and we can move past the personal attacks and harassment and actually just have a better community in general. So anyway, guys, that's about all I've got. Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, go ahead and uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Anyway, peace.